Hello and welcome to the cute baby tutorials using GIMP. I may do a few things in this video, so if you want to go straight to one of the main sections, then the times they start are shown on your screen now. These videos are also available in higher definition on my website, along with any original files I'm allowed to give you in case you want to work on the same image as me. Just click on the link below. OK, here we go. And here's our picture for today. This is a picture of my eldest. He's sitting on top of a horse and he's doing a very good job of not falling off, which we were thrilled about. With this picture, we're going to rotate it and we're going to crop it. Now, here's the first tip. Rotate before you crop. And I'll explain that in a minute as well. If you look at this picture, you can see that the whole thing's skewed round and it looks like my son's leaning forward more than he actually was. That's because when I took the photograph, I had the camera at a slight angle, but it's a fairly easy thing to correct. We'll come here to the toolbox and click on the rotate icon. Now, if you click anywhere on the screen, we get a little dialog box there plus some grid lines. And if I just click and drag, you can rotate the image around to where you need it to be. Those horizontal and vertical lines in the background, they're supposed to help you as a, some kind of guide, but they move with the rotation, so that's not much use to me. So I'm going to do something else here, which might help a little bit. Click on Cancel, and then we're going to come up to this icon in the toolbox, the measuring tool. Click on it, and now I'll click and hold, and I'll drag out a line. Now that's measuring the distance in pixels, how far away I am, how far up I am. It's also measuring the angle that the line I'm drawing is at. In this case, it's 20.28 degrees. Take it down a little bit, 3.54 degrees. Now we can use that. If you take a look at this bar behind the horse, you can see it's at an angle. So let's measure that and we can measure the angle. And sure enough, it's, I'm reading off 4.03 degrees. All right, let's try that. Go back to the rotate tool, click on the image, and I'm going to type in 4.03 degrees and hit enter. Well, you can see what's happening. It's actually got worse now. That's because I've added 4.03 degrees to 4.03 degrees. So that's at an angle of about eight degrees now. So simple enough. Type in minus 4.03 degrees, hit enter, click on rotate to accept the changes, it works it out, and there's my picture at an angle. The only problem now is I've rotated by too much. Take a look at that line of trees in the background. It looks like it's going uphill, so why is that? If you take a photograph of a brick wall and you're facing it straight on, all the bricks will look like they're going horizontally. But if I point the camera so it's looking down the wall and take a photograph, you'll find two things happen. The lines of the bricks look like they're going together at an angle and they're getting closer together as they go into the distance. That's perspective. Now, when I took this photograph of my son, I wasn't facing completely straight on to him and straight on to that fence in the background. So I got a false reading. Right, I don't need that, so I'll go back to Edit, Undo Rotate, and it's back to where it was. One thing you'll find with the whole problem of perspective is the further away the horizontal line that you're looking for, the less the problem with the perspective becomes. I won't explain why just now, but if I go back to the Measure tool and click on that line of trees, you can see the angle is now 1.33 degrees. So if I go back to my rotate tool and click on the image and then click in minus 1.33 degrees, hit enter to accept the values. That looks about right. So click on rotate and yeah, that's looking better. Now, if you take a look at the bottom right of this image, you can see I've suddenly got these little it looks like a gray chessboard here. You've got light gray squares, dark gray squares. That is GIMP's way of telling you that that area is transparent. There's no pixels there. Well, we need to get rid of that. And this is why you rotate before you crop. There's no point in cropping an image, then rotating it, then discovering you've got transparent areas and having to crop all over again. So rotate first. But for now, we're going to click on the crop tool. I'm going to go to the top left-hand corner, Click and hold and drag a box 
all the way down to the bottom. Right. So now I can use that little yellow box that's appeared, drag it about. I've also got some lines here which I can, I can pull those around and come to the top, pull that in, come to this bit, pull that bit in. And then all I do is I click on the image and there's my new cropped picture. Now, if I want to print that out on my home printer, that's great. But if I want to send it off to be developed in a local supermarket, I've got a problem. They will be expecting a certain size to the actual image. They're going to be expecting it to be about that size. So it's that long compared to that high aspect ratio, it's called. So if I have something which I just cropped to, Let's go to redo that the printer will get this image and it will try and print out what it can but it i'll lose something i may lose something off the side the printer may not like it it can't do it so i have to try and keep the proportions of the length and the height the same so i'll click on undo again i've still got the crop tool active so i'm going to click and drag out another box the box i've just dragged out to is the size that i want to keep it so if i come to here to fixed aspect ratio in the tool options and click on it. Now when I click my box around, it stays the same proportions. It won't let me make narrow boxes or wide boxes. Well, that's In this case, that's useful. So I'm going to come to the top right now, pull that down, and I'm looking at the edges of the screen. You can see it's grayed out. I'm just trying to get rid of that gray checkerboard effect. And I think I've got it there. And click on the image. Bang. Done. And now I've got an image which what we refer to in professional circles as boring. And the reason it's boring is the subject, which is the boy, is right in the middle of the screen. Compositionally, it could do with being just maybe just a little bit more interesting. Maybe the boy off to one side or a little bit higher, a little bit lower. But here it's the side to side that I'm concerned with. All right, we can do something with this. If I come back to the crop tool and draw out another box again. Fixed aspect ratio is still on, but now I'm going to come down to here where it says no guides and click on this box. Oh, I've got guidelines. Look, a center line. And sure enough, you can see he's pretty much in the center of the image. If you're judging whether someone's in the center, look at their faces, always look at their faces in most of these things. He's just slightly off center, but it could do with being just a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to come down to this one here, rule of thirds. So I'm going to come down to this one here, the rule of thirds. Now I've got these guidelines which are dividing the picture up into thirds. Well, let's see what I can do with this. Let's click and drag. I'm going to have to make the image smaller because there's no information there for me to do anything else and I'm going to take this and slide it along until that horizontal line falls over my son's face and then I'll click on this okay if you take a look at the composition of that that's looking a bit more interesting he's off to one side it's including more of the background as well that's quite a nice image okay I'm just going to undo that what else have we got? Rule of fifths. Let's try that. Click and drag out a box. And now you've got five different areas of the screen. Well, yes, maybe I can use that. Let's try making the image a little bit smaller. And there. Now I've got the second line falling over his face. Let's click on that. Again, that's that's a nicer image. He's slightly off to one side. It's a little bit more interesting. All right, let's try hitting undo and try it once more. This time I'll try oh, golden sections. That sounds nice. Drag out a box. So what is the golden ratio? Well, People have known about this for thousands of years. You'll find the golden ratio in the proportions of a lot of old Roman and Greek buildings. 
take a look here. We've got this box. For every 13 units along here, you've got about 8 units down here. And to the human eye, it's a very pleasing ratio. It's a very pleasing number of units to the top to the number of units down. If you take a look at a piece of paper from your printer, that's probably got the golden ratio on. If you take a look at a lot of different architecture, that's got the golden ratio on. It looks nice to us. So let's make this a little bit smaller so I've got some room to move the box around and move it along so that line is falling right down the center of his nose. Click again. And again, I'm getting a nice looking image. He just looks right in the image. The crop tool can be useful for quite a few things. Like for example, if in this picture I'd had say a lit bin off to one side, I can just crop it all out and not have to remember it later. And using the rule of thirds, the rule of fifths, the golden section as well, those are all useful guides. That's what they are though, they're guides. You don't have to follow them. You can get some pleasing images when you do, but maybe you can get some dynamic images if you don't. You can surprise the person who's looking at the photograph. Whether you do or not, it's up to you. As long as you have a good picture by the end of it, it's all good. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time. Bye.